is DK and I'm back, back, back again with Band Talk episode six. We are here in the mix. If you hang you a beep, <laughs> if you had you a beep, come up below and let me know what else is here. Now, I do need you guys to make sure you smash the subscribe button. Also, give me a thumbs up on this video and make sure you put me on your big screen video. You guys had questions and I have answers, so we're gonna get to it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's go. Okay, question number one comes from at off topic and they say thank you so much they have been waiting for the video that you posted about the companies to find dedicated routes they know it's not usually your expertise but do those types of companies usually require commercial insurance so you ain't been watching the videos huh? <laughs> i already know you haven't been watching the videos you know how i know because if you was watching the videos and you would know that i've said previously that some of the companies that were on that list they actually have their own insurance you can go through them you don't have to have commercial insurance so you can go under their insurance and they're just going to take out uh some money every week two weeks or every month i'm not sure exactly when it's going to be but some of those companies uh, for sure i know for sure that t-force has that t-force logistics for sure has a thing where you can actually go into their insurance and they're going to take it out your check every week every two weeks every month i'm not sure exactly when but guess what go out there and get them dividends and win um he also said have you ever had to create your own bill of lading for freight that you needed to move no, no, I've never had to create my own bill of lading. Um, usually they send me send it through an email. I get it that way, print it out with the little printer I got. I, hey, if you want your printer, you want you don't want to have to deal with all that. You want your printer in your van or your car or whatever? Go. Oh, somebody dog jump over their fence. That joint just out here. So if you want your printer like I got, all you gotta do is click the link in the description and go ahead and get that printer, baby. Printer, printer, chicken dinner. You're gonna be a winner. He's right at your door. Look, look at this dog. He just jumped over that. He just jumped over that fence. You know you won't get in trouble. I don't even know why you did that, doggy. Doggy, doggy. He's a good doggy, doggy. Question number two comes from at Team Run It Up, and they say. Love your videos and your advice. Did you have a lot of money saved up before you started the cargo van business? And if you so, how much do you recommend for someone to have before they start their own business? That's a great question. I get this type of questions all the time. Honestly, I don't believe that, I mean, everybody has their own definition of a lot of money. A lot of money to somebody may be a thousand dollars. Some other people may be a 10,000. Some people may be 10 million. Some people may be 50 million, a billion. You know, it just depends on the person you're asking about a lot of money. Um, I will say that this is my personal opinion. I do think that you should definitely watch my guy Big CJ video. He actually has two videos on how he started his, well, his one year review on his cargo van business. He gives out a lot of great information. Me personally, I do think you should have at least six months reserve set aside so you can start the business. Now you should have the vehicle already. That's my personal opinion. And then you should have at least six months of reserve set aside. So if anything is, is to happen, that you will be okay. Because there are going to be some slow days, as you guys know, if, you, if you've been tuning into the channel. There are going to be some slow days where you're not going to make some money. Example, today. Today we went out. I got up in my regular time, did all the stuff I needed to do, uh, put in for rolling orders, didn't get them. And I literally, we literally made zero dollars today. Zero. So this is zero. So you have to have money set aside so you can be able to get past those days. And also, I do want to say this. If you don't have money set aside, if you don't have money saved up to start the business, and you just get your van, and then you have $1,000, what happens if something happens? So what happens if a tire go out or something like that? That's something you got to think about. And not to mention, when you have the less money you have, the worse decisions you make. That's just what I think, in my personal opinion. I think that if you have... Um, a thousand dollars, you're just gonna be thirsty. You're gonna go do stuff that you shouldn't be doing, and you're thinking you're making money, but you're really not making money. You're really losing money. You just see the month dollar sign. So you see the dollar sign saying that you should go 200 miles for 200 dollars, but it, in order for you to run your van, it costs you a dollar and fifty cents to run it, and you can't run it now. But well, you did run it, but you ran it for one dollar. So now you really lost money. You think you gained money, but you lost. So that's the way I think about it. Comment below and let me know what you guys think about it. Question number three comes from On the Road with Ram Regan, and he says, I got a question. What's the best approach to getting involved with medical supplies and carrier companies? He's looking to expand into doing loads this year with his van, and he wants to know your opinion on how to approach these jobs. Honestly, see, let me just uh, explain to you guys something. 
there's a very big difference between being an independent contractor and being a uh, W-2 employee. It's not the same thing. When you go for these interview stuff, it's not really an interview. It's just pretty much them telling you what you're going to be doing. Like when we went to T-Force Logistics to do that uh, interview, it was more like an orientation. They say, this is what we're going to do. This is what you do. You got this. These are all the packages right here. You're going to get all these packages. You're going to pack up your van, and then you're going to go that way. And then you just come back and do this and do that. So it's, that's pretty much how it goes. Now, as far as medical carrying goes, in my area, this is my area only. I only speak for my area. I don't know about everybody else's area, but we do have a company called Spoke Logistics that I talked about in a previous video, and they actually have medical carrying stuff. Also, um, medical, I mean medical supply stuff. Also, T Force Logistics has some medical supplies too as well. So I don't really I think that this is what I'm gonna say. I think that you need to do some research, research, research. Go on Indeed. All of those five companies that I listed in that video, I actually found every single one of them on Indeed. Um, you can go to Indeed. Also, I recommend that you go ahead and check out Mark the Mentor channel. He talks about different dedicated routes and ever dedicated loads and all that stuff. Uh, final mile stuff for box trucks and cargo vans and how he thinks that he you can make the most money with each vehicle um, He's he done it for a while. He did it. He did it before he had like 15 trucks and all that stuff So he he's very knowledgeable all the information and you definitely can get you some game So you can go out there and get your change Okay, question number four comes from at Darius Northern and he says with the fluctuating pay we experience on gig apps in conjunction with driving loads that should be worth way more than we expect than we accept especially on roadie what is your take on the idea of a union amongst gig drivers and how could that idea come to life i think that's actually a great idea i all i have always said this since the beginning of time if we had stuff like if we all stuck together the prices will go up there is no questions there's no ifs ands and buts about it but there's always going to be people who are just not going to agree with it they're going to say i gotta go feed my family i gotta go do this i gotta do that it's just the same way as when people try to go on strike if they try to go on strike without the, without a union then some people are going to sneak and go to work and then other ones going to stay outside and all that stuff so i do think that a union will help us out a lot in the situation but Another thing about the union is, for the most part, those people who are in a union, they have to pay dues. They have to pay a certain amount of money towards the union. Now, are, is everybody going to want to do that? You know, some people, they want all their money. They don't want to pay no games. They don't want to worry about no union. See, you know what would be crazy about people, right? Nobody wants to pay out for the union, but when something happens, then they wish they did. That's that's how I be. That's how I be in life. A lot of people, they say, I ain't finna pay no money. I ain't finna do this. I ain't finna do that until something happens. I didn't want to be a part of the union. Absolutely not. I do think that it is an excellent idea, and I also believe that if we all stick together and we was on the same accord, we would be able to afford a lot more things. Cause we'd be out there getting that green, nothing in between. Now, as far as how that can come to life, I honestly have no idea. I, I just don't know. I don't know who will be the spokesman. I don't know what will happen, how it will happen, when it will happen. Maybe we have to vote everybody vote into it, but it's still so many people across so many states that I don't know how it's gonna be possible. Like, how are we gonna each reach every, how are we all gonna come together? I don't know how, how that will happen. I, I really don't know, that's just my honest to God truth. I really don't know, but I would definitely like it to happen, but I don't know how it would happen. Comment below and let me know, how do you guys think it would be possible to create us a union? Question number five comes from at CS, and they say, are you and your business partner still in the real estate game? And if so, is it residential or commercial real estate? We are absolutely still in the real estate game, and we do whatever you want to do. We could do commercial, residential, industrial, whatever you want to do. You want to farm, whatever you want, we could do it. We spit the hot fluid. We have sold some commercial buildings before. We have sold some residential buildings before. Um, we actually sold a big gun shop here in, in our area, and they actually turned it into like a, a grocery store, a bakery and all that stuff. It's, it's, it was low-key exclusive, low-key exclusive. We still haven't been there since they redid and everything, but we definitely did sell that. Um, that was early on too. We, hey, hey look, I'm gonna say this. Whatever you want to do, we can do it. We're in Illinois, we're licensed in Illinois and Wisconsin. So whichever state you choose, hey, you ain't gonna lose, especially dealing with us. Hey, call Rome when you want to buy or sell your home. <laughs> Question number six comes from at Rideshare Lisa, and she says, you do a lot of van work, but it seems like it has its issues. Have you thought about getting back into catering? It does pay really well. Shout out to Rideshare Lisa. Rideshare Lisa be here for <laughs> Rideshare Lisa has been with us for a very long time. Make sure you guys go subscribe to her YouTube channel because she's putting a lot of content over there. Um, As far as 
the catering stuff. Actually, hey, Raj, here, Raj, I'm gonna tell you something. Look, we just had our second highest pen deliver order yesterday. That video dropping soon. It's, it's, I don't know when it's gonna drop, but it's dropping soon. Monday. It's gonna drop Monday. Our second highest pen delivered order. We went out there and got an order. So and it was super sweet. So I definitely, me personally, I go wherever the money at. If the deliver order or a deliver that order or any type of order that comes in, if it's good, I'm choosing that joint. I'm going out there to get busy. I don't care about um, where it's located and all that stuff. If it makes sense, it makes sense. So I go wherever the money go. I don't really care about the carrier companies. I don't really care about the other ass. I don't care about nothing. I go wherever the money go. If the money go here, I go there with it. So, shout out to my girl, Ryan Sherlisa, and make sure you guys subscribe to her YouTube channel. Question number seven comes from at Responsibly Broke, and they say, appreciate the videos and the information. Would you consider doing a challenge with other content creators in the cargo van space? Um, they gave two examples, maybe like you in versus Big CJ or K Pat Gigtainment, and you do like a challenge or something of like seeing who can make the most money in three days in the other person's city or state. Oh, so he want he want me to go. They they come to, we go to each other's state. Yes, I don't Jeez. know. How, how that would <laughs> Jeez, that that's critical. So I got to go all the way down to Texas. I know it's hot as fisheries down there too. I got to go all the way down to Texas. And then Pat Gig Tammy, I, I think he may be in New Jersey or New York or somewhere out east. He out there in the east side, on the east side. But um, honestly, I don't think that's, I don't know. This, this is what I'm going to say about the challenge. Um, I don't think that anything is wrong with friendly competition. Everybody, you know, compete with each other and all that stuff. But I would rather, instead of compete with each other, let's eat with each other. Because sometimes the supporters and the uh, subscribers, they take things the wrong way and they might overdo things. Because sometimes you may have somebody, you let somebody do so and so make more money, you so and so this, so and so that. You know, a lot of times some subscribers, they always got something to say negative about everybody and how they're doing everything. So I don't want to create a division between any of us. All of us need to work together. All of us has our own separate lanes. All of us do our own things separately. Like CJ do how he do it, Pat do how he do it, St. Mike, everybody. Giggies. Everybody do how they do it. Everybody create content how they create content. Everybody, I think that we should all group together and it would be greater in groups. That's just what I think. Um, I do. I don't, I don't think nothing wrong, is wrong with the friendly competition, but I, I don't want to send a wrong message out to the subscribers and the supporters and everything that, you know, it's a beef or we going back and forth. And some people do. Some people love the drama, though. Don't get me wrong. Some people love the back and forth and all that stuff. They like that. I'm not really into that. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to help everybody make as much money as possible and then change as many lives as possible. That's why I'm here. And I'm here. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're probably doing the same thing. I know for sure Big CJ is on that. I'm not sure about Pat Gates. I've actually talked to Big CJ personally, one on one type, you know, through emails and all that stuff, text messages and stuff. So that's what he's on. Um, everybody has their own lane and they're doing their own thing. But guess what? Well, all that matters at the end of the day. So they, they out there getting their own chain. That's all that matters. You know what I'm talking about? But that was an excellent question. And huge shout out to you. Y'all already know what to do. Smash that like button. Question number eight comes from at Mike Finelli. And he says, scenario time. You pick up you pick up a return order from Top Golf and bring it back to the courier warehouse. Before you go and pick up the return, the courier dispatchers ask you, can you bring two boxes down to Top Golf from the warehouse due to someone else forgetting to deliver those two boxes down three days ago? This part of the order would be for free, and the return part would still be paid. Would you be okay with that? So they want you to take boxes from the warehouse to the Top Golf and drop off the Top Golf stuff you were supposed to drop off, or you got to go back and forth for. for first off, let me just say that I don't even really matter. Absolutely not. If you ain't pay me, I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. This is not a do me a favor time. I'm not doing no favors. They ain't gonna do you no favors. They ain't gonna say, yeah, Mike. You know what? Even though you ain't coming in today, we gonna pay you. They ain't gonna do that. Look, this is business. It's not personal. It, it doesn't have anything to do with their personality, if they cool or not, and none, none of that stuff. This is business. It's strictly financial. That's it. That's all. If they want you to do it, got to pay me. Now, you, me, if I'm you, I, I mean, if I already got to go over there anyway, I'm doing it for a little bit less, but y'all still paying me something. I'm not going for the, I'm not going for the free ski. Because that wasn't my fault. That ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't my fault. And once you, let me tell you this right now. I'm telling you, everybody who watches this video, once you start doing it, they ain't gonna want you to stop doing it. Every time somebody forgets something, they gonna call you, Mike, yeah, Mike, and you, Mike, and you, Mike, Mike. Now you, now you, now you run it for free. So do not start it. If you don't start it, you ain't gotta stop it. That's a, a saying my mom, all my mom and grandma always said. If you don't start it, you ain't gotta stop it. They need to stop it with the free stuff. If y'all want me to do this job, y'all need to pay me, baby. That's it. That's all. Uh, we trying the ball, not stall. 
Um, he made sure to comment afterwards that he said no because he wasn't going to get paid to bring those two boxes down, but he just wanted to hear input. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Hey, we ain't, hey, we can't be playing these games with these people, man. I'm going to tell you right now. They ain't going to try to get over every single time. If, it's, if they can get over 10 times, they're going to get over 10 times out of 10 times. So we have to stick to our guns and do how we do it. I spit that how fluid. I thought y'all knew it. Question number nine comes from at Bob Church. And he says, McHenry Bob here. Love your videos. This isn't an easy business to be in. What are your thoughts on getting into real estate doing flips? Oh, my guy, McHenry Bob. Shoot, sounds like my guy, McHenry Bob. Actually, McHenry Bob, we have done a couple flips. We actually did two flips. But I'm going to say this again. I'm, I'm Look. I'm saying this every time you reach out to me, McHenry Bob, whenever you want to come out of retirement, we have bought a property. Look, how about this? I'm, I'm going to make you an offer, McHenry Bob, and we're still going to pay you. The next time we're going to find us a property, we're going to buy it, me and my business partner, we're going to get the property and everything, and guess what? We could create a whole other channel or something like that, and you can come there and show us how to do everything. You're still going to get paid. I'm still going to pay you. I'm paying you to teach me. I'm going to still pay you however much you charge. If, 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 it got to make sense, though. It got to make sense, though. However much you charge, but my whole thing about this is to learn how to do this stuff so i'm definitely down to do it i'm into real estate i love real estate why well, i don't love it i love what makes me money i'm gonna say that i love what makes me money and real estate happens to be one of those things i definitely would love to flip some houses or even get a you know pretty beat up not too bad not financial problems are pretty beat up um and hold on wait before i get into that i want to say this this is the type of people y'all want to talk to i'm telling shout out to my guy henry bob i tell you guys you need to conversate with different people and i also want to say this about YouTube in general. YouTube has opened doors up for me and it, and it got me to talk to different people. People I would probably would have never met if I didn't do YouTube. So me putting myself out there is gonna help people and also I can meet new people like my guy McHenry Bob. Now, not to mention my guy McHenry Bob, he is a, a carpenter, well he's a retired carpenter. He might come out of retirement, we don't know yet. Uh, he's a retired carpenter and I'm sure that he knows people that does all the different trades, roofing, this, that. So guess what? That's a good person to know in my life, especially because I'm in real estate. But back to what I was saying. So what are my thoughts on doing real estate, getting into flips? That's what my guy, Nick Henry Bob, want to know. I'm going to tell you guys. Me personally, right now, that interest rate high, man. If you got straight cash, you got cash, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you could buy a property and do, do it like that, I would recommend you do it. It depends on how fast you want to flip it. The interest rates are pretty high right now, so less people are buying. It's like a, a very low amount of percentage that people are buying right now. So the deal just really have to make sense. If the deal makes sense and you can make money, I think that it's a good, you can do it. But it's, it's very seldom you're going to find a good deal nowadays because everything is pretty much overpriced and the interest rates are high. So unless you find a killer of a deal, the only way I think you can find a killer of a deal is if you, if you meet a private owner and do it that way versus you going through a real estate agent and all that stuff. You might find a deal here and there, but you ain't going to find as many as if you know somebody that knows somebody and know they got this house, they about to move out of state, they're going to Florida or something, they want to get rid of it. You can just uh, deal directly with them. Y'all both can save money. You can save money from... Uh, them have to pay the real estate agent because if they pay the real estate agent, you have to pay more money. Even though I'm a real estate agent, I'm just gonna tell you the truth about business. This business ain't personal. Um, the reality of it is, I think it's okay right now, but I think it would be better when the interest rate come down some more because it's super high. But I definitely, I, I'm, I'm with it. Hey, McHenry Bob, if you want to do some deals? We can make it happen. We can make it happen, Captain. Um, do you think that maybe some houses would, you know, maybe go into foreclosure soon since people, you know, during COVID they couldn't kick you out, but all that is kind of starting, you know, ended and it's starting to catch back up? I do think that they're going to have some foreclosures going on, but I do also want to say this, guys. A lot of people don't be really knowing about foreclosures. They be hearing about what everybody else hear and they try to, you know, talk about foreclosures or talk about this, talk about that. They just hear a lot of stuff they hear on the internet. And reality of the fact is, for the most part with the foreclosures, the banks own the property after everything is foreclosed. They own the property. And what is the bank's job? Y'all tell me. Comment below and let me know. I'm going to give y'all five seconds. Three, two, one, zero. The bank job is to make money. Now, you think you're going to run out and get this foreclosure for way less than it's supposed to be, uh, way less than it's supposed to be priced for and it's not going to happen you want to know why because the bank gonna have it appraised already and they gonna know exactly how much the house worth before you even go on and think you're gonna go get it so they're not going to lose money on the house they already look kind of they not low-key gonna lose no money at all they actually still gonna gain it's gonna be a tax write-off for them that's how they're gonna break even off that and then they're gonna sell a house and then you're gonna buy it you can't fix it up and make it better and possibly make a profit but it's less likely than most people think they everybody i'm gonna give me a foreclosure and i'm like Hey, it's the same thing. 
It's, it's really a fixer up. That's really what it is. Sometimes the foreclosures are worse fixer uppers because people are mad mm -hmm. that they're getting kicked out, so they literally start ripping everything out and take stuff with them. Pouring what they be pouring, pouring concrete in the toilet. I just do all type of stuff, crazy stuff. My grandpa, you know, my grandpa, he he had. I, oh, grandpa, I think he had like five properties. I can't remember how many he had. I already know. Anyway, look, he said people be pouring concrete in the toilet, so that joint hard, and then you got to get the whole pipes ran out and all. Paul, whoo, that was crazy. You <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get the pipes cleaned out and everything. So, with the foreclosures, you get what you get. Question number 10 comes from at Blazing Tundra, and they say, I noticed you do some orders in Wisconsin. Where's the furthest you've gone in Wisconsin? I live in Waukesha, so if you ever need a hand, give me a shout and I'll help you out. Shout out to you. Actually, where's the furthest we went? We went to Oshkosh. Maybe we went to Oshkosh. We went to Oshkosh to do a freight order. Um, well, we've been in Waukesha a few times, like two or three times. We definitely shoot a huge shout to you. Huge shout out to everybody in Wisconsin. Now I know I used to live up. There. I used to live in Kenosha for a little bit, man. I used to live in Kenosha. You know, I used to be in the keynote no getting it in when I was in high school. You know, I graduated from Bradford High School. I was up, I was in Kenosha for like two and a half years. Like my sophomore, uh, uh like yeah, like three years to like the middle of my sophomore year. My junior year and my senior year. And I graduated from Bradford, Mary D. Bradford, baby. So huge shout out to everybody in Wisconsin. Uh, the furthest out, actually, let me say this. If, you, if you're talking about with this van, the furthest we went, I think it's Oshkosh. No, we took it to Green Bay. We took it to Green Bay to see my cousin for his birthday. We took the van to Green Bay. We thought we were going to get some orders out there, but we we only got one Walmart order. So we did go to Green Bay one time. Um, other than that, with the van, we really haven't went that far in Wisconsin. But I do want to say this. I have been a lot of different places in Wisconsin because I used to work for a place called Second Wind Exercise Equipment. I used to deliver exercise equipment everywhere. Waukesha, Walsall, Stevens Point. I'm talking about everywhere. We used to be oop, 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 going everywhere out there in Wisconsin. But thank you for the question. Huge shout out to you. Get this money is what we're trying to do. And last but not least, this comes from at Darius Northern. It's not really a question, more of a suggestion. And he says that he thinks that you're underselling the value of your brand and charisma. That Triple C, Cars and Cribs merchandise, hats, hoodies, safety vests, etc. Simple and clean merchandise can go a long way. He also says exclusive content with information with Patreon subscription, uh, cargo van, gig driver essentials, and brand deals that you promote on YouTube. That is a great point. Look, look with the merch, man. I ain't gonna lie. We have been trying for a while to do this merch. It's just we're very limited on time. Honestly, if we had like a company that can create the merch for us, kind of, sort of, I think that that will work out way better for us because our merch, the merch that I wear right now, like the Redefining Brand merch, you see that merch right there, merched up, that we actually created it ourselves. Like we got the stuff, we got the transfers, we put it on the uh, merch and everything. I mean, we put it on the hoodies, we put it on the t-shirt, the shorts. We had short sets. Hoodies, t-shirts, we had all that, hats, we had everything. And we pretty much did our, oh yeah, cologne and perfume, we had that too. Excuse shout out to Rosh, at least you know she be rocking that perfume. She know what that perfume like, she know, <laughs> she know what that perfume like, that perfume is right, righteous. But we definitely had that stuff, but all of that stuff we did it with our own two hands. So, right now we really don't have as much time as we had before. So, the plan is to probably find a company that can actually do this for us, like, it's kind of like more hands off. Like we create everything and then they just, y'all order it and they ship it out. Boom, 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 boom. Cause we really don't have the time. But with that being said, we also need the time to create the actual image of whatever we're going to be putting on there. I kind of got some ideas of some of the stuff that I want. We got one that's almost kind of done, but we still, it's, it, we don't got no time, man. I'm, that's just the honest truth. Um, with, Doing the gig apps and the carrier company and then the YouTube channel stuff, it takes up a lot of your time. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but if you got a YouTube channel, you know what time it is. You already know. You already know that it takes up a lot of time, especially editing videos. Like, it takes hours on top of hours on top of hours to edit these videos. So, that's why I'm asking y'all just to like the video. That's it. Like the video and smash the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Also, for that comment, I do want to say if you have any pointers or anything or any information that you that you have that can actually help me out so we can go out there and get busy, please email me at romeshousereviews at gmail.com and let me know because I need to know as much information as possible, baby, because I'm, I'm trying to hit to that next level. 2024, we're going to go out there and score all day. We ain't playing. Get the clap for NBA Bay. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you are not subscribed, Make sure to smash the subscribe button. Also, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget before we go to 
Don't see the 